Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, this is the instructional video number two on uh, turning your photographs into an animated sequence uh, and using Premiere uh, and Bridge and Photoshop to kind of achieve that. So as you can kind of see, uh, I've got all my uh, photographs, uh, 252 photographs, uh, imported into my computer. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is uh, I put them all in a folder called Animation Example, and I'm going to actually now uh, take all these photos and use Bridge to re-export them and rename them at the same time, or at least in two different passes. Remember, these are iPhone photos, and we had some serious issues with these photos uh, being used in Premiere uh, because things went backwards, if you can remember um, our failure at, uh, in class. So we're going to definitely have to use Bridge. So I have Adobe Bridge uh, that I've downloaded uh, to my computer. You should all have the Creative Cloud uh, downloaded. Make sure you have Bridge, Photoshop, and um, Premiere. Uh, I am going to find these uh, under Animation Example, so it should be right here. And we're going to open them up in Bridge. You'll see them uh, show up in a second. Okay, uh, I've just uh, took a second for uh, the thumbnails to get created in Bridge. But as you can see, as I scroll through, you can see all the images. Uh, they are currently in the correct order. You can see 3424, 3426. Uh, 3428. This was because my phone uh, took two photos. Um, never mind, I had to delete uh, half of the images um, in order for this to work. But anyway, I have all my images here. And what I'm going to do is select all of them, edit, uh, select all, all my images. Uh, and now you can see everything is selected. And now I'm going to go to Tools, uh, Photoshop, and I'm going to go to Image Processor. So I get this dialog window here, and what I'm going to do is make sure that the Save as JPEG box is checked. Uh, I'm going to put the quality at 10 because uh, this will make things move a little faster. The, the worse your computer, maybe the lower the quality, uh, because they're going to be really large images. So when you bring them into Premiere, it'll be pretty big. Um, and then I'm just going to hit the Run button. Now it's notice it's saving in the same folder. so. What you're going to do now is just going to watch this. Uh, you can kind of see it's working its little butt off up here. Uh, you're going to go away, get some coffee. It's going to take a bit of time to, to go through all 250 images um, in Photoshop, say, open them, save them, and then close them down. So I'm going to just go ahead and speed up this video. OK. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close up Photoshop. If I scroll down way to the bottom, there is a new folder, and that's the folder that you're going to want to use because that has all the, uh, the new files in it. Uh, I'm going to double click this folder, and what you'll see as soon as the thumbnails pop up is 252 items, um, but these are going to be in a way kind of like, you know, they're going to work better for you in Premiere. Now, the last thing we need to do in Bridge is to rename all of these files. So I'm going to wait till all the thumbnails come in just to make sure everything is selected. Uh, great, everything looks pretty much in. Double check. Yep. So I'm going to go to uh, Edit, Select All. Then I'm going to go to Tools, Batch Rename. We've done this in class before. They were in the correct order. You can kind of see going uh, from low to high. So this is Fine, and I'm going to change the name to TP underscore, and I'm going to change the sequence number to 001, and I'm going to use three digits. Uh, so this is how it currently is, IMG, and then the new naming convention will be TP underscore 001. Uh, make sure you add the underscore and make sure you have the three digits selected, especially if you have over 100, obviously. Uh, and then what it will do is hit rename and it will take a, a little bit of time to rename everything so you want to give it a, a, a second again there's 252 items you'll see this up here all right and you can kind of see it starts at 001 and it goes all the way to 252. Uh, we do not need bridge anymore uh, so we're going to go ahead and quit bridge and you'll notice that in our folder uh, that we started with, we now have a new folder uh, with the name JPEG. I'm just going to call this folder uh, TP so that I know 
uh, what to bring into uh, Premiere. So now we're going to go into Premiere. Again, here's our TP folder, and everything is in the right order. And you can see if I kind of go through it, we've got the, the things in order. All right, next part we're going to use uh, is Premiere. So I'm going to launch Premiere. A bit of time if you've just installed it. Remember how long it took in class. Uh, I've got a very fast computer. If you've got a slow computer, you might want to walk away for a little while. Um, okay, we're going to create a new project. Uh, and we're going to call this project TP. And I'm going to put it on the desktop. So um, I'm going to browse to the desktop and choose the desktop. This way I know where everything is located. And I'm going to hit OK. Next thing we're going to do. Uh, is import those video or those images as an image sequence. So I'm going to double click the bin down here uh, and I'm going to find my animation example in the TP folder. I'm going to double click the TP folder, uh, pick the first number, 001, then I'm going to go to options and I'm going to select image sequence. It's really important you have everything uh, listed in order. Now, if you don't have these in order, if something is missing, like number eight is missing, you will not have the entire video. This is why it's important to open it in Bridge. Uh, as long as image sequence is selected, it'll pick everything in that sequence and bring it in. And if I've done everything correct, uh, I'll double click this and you'll see I've got the entire sequence uh, that I've taken. If anything is not correct here, Go back to through the video and make sure you've renamed everything, nothing is missing, you didn't accidentally delete something. Okay, the next step, as we did in class, is to change this frame rate to 12 frames per second. Now I'm going to control click or right mouse button click uh, on this sequence and you can kind of see right here where we have um, modify, interpret footage, and what we're going to do is interpret this footage and say that it is not 29 frames per second, but it is 12. We've done this in class, so hopefully this will be, make more sense. So now I have a 12 frames per second sequence. Now the next thing, this is special, this is not something we've done in class, is we're gonna create a sequence that's uh, 1920 by 1080p, because if we were to drag this into this timeline here, we would have this entire framed area, and you can kind of see hopefully, that this is not 16 by 9. This is not a typical video uh, aspect ratio. So because your phone has a different aspect ratio for the camera as compared to video, okay, we're going to go ahead and create the uh, 16 by 9 manually. So here's how you do it. Uh, down here is the new item tab. Uh, again, we're in the editing window. You can click on that and select sequence here, or you can go file, new, and then select the sequence here. So whatever way you do it, you're going to get a new sequence. Now this is really important. What we're going to do is we're going to create a, a new sequence uh, setting. Uh, this way we could use it in the future. And so what I'd like you to do is go to the settings tab, make sure you select custom. Uh, time base should be 12 frames per second. I want your frame size to be 1920 and horizontal 1080 square pixels, right? Uh, no field, progressive scans, uh, frame, and then 48 kilohertz audio sampling. Uh, for file format preview, I have uh, this one selected. Um, uh, as long as you don't select QuickTime, I think it should be fine. Um, I have had not had any issues with this uh, file preview. I have no idea what that is. Uh, finally, we're going to name the sequence uh, TP. But before we do uh, hit OK, before that, we're going to save this preset because then we're going to use it again and again. So we're going to save preset and we're going to call this animation preset 12 frames per second, 1920 by 1080. Again, that's a standard high definition size. Uh, there we go. And then we're going to hit OK. Now in the future, uh, you'll see it kind of show up here. You'll see it under a custom uh, folder and you'll see animation preset. So we can uh, create a new sequence in the future just by selecting this animation preset. We're going to hit OK. Uh, and now we've got what looks like correct uh, aspect ratio here. We are now going to drag our video into this timeline. Now watch what happens when I do this. I'm just going to grab the video and drag it and let go. Normally, you would 
change the sequence settings. But because we know our sequence is correctly sized, we're going to keep the existing settings. This is really important. I hope you're watching this. Uh, keep existing settings. Now you'll notice when I hit the space bar, it is working 12 frames per second, but you see that the scaling is wrong. And that's good because this gives us we know we didn't need as much information. Our camera has bigger, much more pixels. So we've got this huge piece of video. And how do we scale our uh, sequence so that it works? Well, uh, the way you scale, I'm going to hit the plus button a couple times so you can see my video here, uh, is to double click the actual um, animation in your timeline to open it up in the, uh, the viewer window. And then just like in class, go to the effects control tab uh, and you notice that my playhead is over that video. Uh, go to the effects control tab and then change your scale. And you can see as I move the scale down, I can see more of the animation. And you'll notice that the animation aspect ratio is that of uh, the camera. So if you have this aspect ratio, uh, the top and the bottom, you don't, um, you don't want these black lines, right? So you'll want to scale it up uh, so that it makes sense. But if you scale it up too much, for me, I'm scaling it up 50%. Uh, you can kind of see. Obviously, the head gets cut off. So in order for us to see maybe the top portion of this video, you can kind of see here, uh, I will need to change the position as well. So not only the height of the, or the top or the bottom of the camera, because again, the camera has a different aspect ratio. So for me, uh, maybe that's the part that I want to show, and maybe I'm not as concerned about the feet. Or you can uh, edit this somewhere by using like the cut tool, cut something here, and then change this, maybe make this part uh, just the feet. Double clicking this will open up just this piece. Uh, go to the effects control, and then maybe changing the position so we're seeing just the feet here, and the scale is a little bit tighter maybe, I don't know. Right, and so maybe that part is the feet walking like I had and then the, the next section jumps to uh, as you can kind of see jumps to a different portion of the video right and you can cut the video up again to scale in on things so if they're looking there you might want to cut that and then double click this next port portion go to the effects and maybe you want to scale that up to a hundred so that we just see the toilet paper in the frame like that Right, so now we've got this looking back, toilet paper, nice close up, and then we go back to the full version. Hopefully this helps a little bit. Again, uh, double clicking will open up the effects control area and you can then modify each of these cut pieces. And so create something that looks uh, like a multiple uh, shots. When we're ready to export this video, uh, you will go to file. Uh, export media don't forget you have to select this area uh, and then what we will do is h264 match source high bitrate and export video and audio especially if you have some audio you'll notice that if you've done everything correctly 1920 by 1080 is selected here 12 frames per second is what we want because that's what our video was okay now we're gonna go ahead and uh, make sure that we know where we're saving this TP1, we're putting it on the desktop, hit save and export. This video is the video you will then upload to YouTube and then embed it into your WordPress. Seems like a lot of steps, uh, but this is what we do uh, with animation. So uh, just so you can see the, the video, here it is, it's finished. And this is what it looks like. So you can kind of see that was my lower area. Uh, that's the bigger size, I'm zoomed in here, and then that's done. And you can see, I can't see the paper rolling, so I would have probably fixed that. And there was a camera movement. Okay, I hope this helps. Thanks so much.